right here. Here's something that this is this is this is a good little like fire CI chat. Okay, so this is what I was thinking we should we should think about while we're planning our lessons, okay? Like whether you're using these lessons or any other lessons. Okay, so first you gotta simplify. Mm hmm So you wanna make sure that you are cutting everything down to the most like essential things, okay? Um, so I know there's a lot of resources flying around and it's great, but you want to take those and think about how like You want to use them like purposefully and I don't mean to say that like to stress you out like you must use your resources purposefully young lady not like that. It's like You need if, if you can like simplify down to a framework or some kind of like replicable purpose every day then it will simplify your life because when you encounter a new resource you'll be able to say like I know where that goes I know how like I can see what the purpose of that is I can literally go and look I'm gonna okay I'm gonna go on I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna type in teaching with CI into Google <coughs> all right so um teaching with CI by Grant Boulanger his the title of his blog is teaching with CI so let's go to his blog and we'll, we'll just try to like hit upon the first like strategy that he has. Um, uh, rejoinders. Introducing some rejoinders. Rejoinders exist to keep the flow of language going. Scaffolding up to production. Okay, so to me that like totally sounds like guided oral input. Like if I was going to introduce a new rejoinder, that would be my guided input for the day. Um, let's just go back. And so it's like, you you know, you're like going along, living your life. And then you're like, hey, Grant, good idea. Teach him with rejoinders. And if, if you've ever seen like Grant do any presentations, you know, he sure makes rejoinders look fun. So like, it's like, okay, well, where am I going to fit in the rejoinders? It's like, okay, well, every week, I guess maybe like for my guided oral input on Thursdays, it'll be my rejoinder refresher day. And then, all right, let's see down here. Um, Spanishmama.com. Okay, well, we'll go to Mr. Fisher Says. I've never seen Mr. Fisher's blog, so this is Ben Fisher. One word images, building a character and community too. Well, that's guided oral input, like obviously. If I use a one word image, um, it belongs to create category of the star. Well, I won't say that anymore because, well, many reasons. Um, let me see. I'm going to, I'm going to just play one more time. Look, all right. So let's just go to like a, a famous person, you know, that everybody knows. Martina Bex. So, Martina Bex, oh, Martin Bex, I don't want, I don't want that, Martin Bex, this Martina Bex is like crazy little brother. Oh, uh, let's see, the conference will climb. Um, all right, so, speed dating. Use speed dating to help your students find their perfect book. Oh, this is an interesting story by Martina. After a lifetime of not really dating, my brother signed up for a speed dating event. Terrified from the moment he made the decision, I think he would have considered survival a success. Lo and behold, he left with a request for a follow-up date from every person that he speed dated that evening, and he ended up marrying one of them less than a year later. So I guess you could say I'm a believer in the potential of speed dating, but what does that have to do with language teaching? Well, it's hooking kids up with good books. So obviously, this is for reading workshop. So let's see. One more, one more. Let's see, who else is, like, everybody knows. Everybody knows Annabelle. La Maestra Loca. Um... Annabelle's not actually crazy. She's just really energetic and amazing. Um, so um, this is the tag for brain breaks on her page. And so brain breaks are kind of like, most brain breaks are by definition kind of short. So they don't really like fit into the, um, you know, mold, I guess you could say, because like in the uh, daily framework, like there's really no place that says like brain break. I kind of play brain breaks by ear, so they just kind of float around. So that's a little special. But um, here, let's search her blog. Uh, let's see. Oh, these are all about brain breaks, so I guess I got to go to like the, just to the actual blog. Hmm. I guess I got to go home, and then blog. Okay. Um. There's okay. Lots. Okay. Hang on. Okay. Wooly week. Hmm, now that's interesting, right? Like, let's say you got Wooly Week. Would you 
Oh, that's so cute. There she is looking at Memphis inside her stomach. Like, well, not stomach. They're not really in her stomach. Um, inside her uterus. <laughs> like, with a, with a shirt by Senor Woolley uh, that says, Todo es posible. So cute. And then she's got another one with, like, Memphis down there. Like, she's really pregnant. And it says, Porque Carlos fue al baño. Like, it's so funny because she's pregnant. Like, really pregnant. That's so funny. So, like, yeah, Wooly Week. People are always kind of like, what do I do with each Wooly song? Well, Senor Wooly's stuff actually fits in, like, really well to this framework. Because, like, you've got the videos, right? So that's obviously, like, guided oral input. And then there's all kinds of activities you could use on there for, like, writing or, like, um, you know, reading workshop. Like, the next day in reading workshop, you could use some of his embedded readings. Um, and then, like, at the end, there's, like, the student application and assessment. So um, Jim has all of these like work sheets, but they're not like work sheets. Like you think of as a worksheet. They're like, you know, fun sheets. <laughs> they're, they're like just ways to play with the language and stuff like that. So that I would, I would put that in like student application and assessment or use it for a day when I can't like even go into school hardly. So anyway, that was just a little like trip down, uh, you know, other, other blog lane. Um, yeah, back you guys. A good short book for sports. Yeah, you and everybody else, Maggie. <laughs> um, I did I did post inside the Google Classrooms, which like these Google Classrooms are no mystery. You can go right up to the top there and you can sign right on up, okay? And you can you'll be in that Google Classroom like, you know, lightning. Greased lightning, I'd say even. Um Yeah, Maggie, I put a link to um like Profe Elote, he um made this um database of non-fiction texts um and there's not like a ton of them in there but there might be one on sports who knows so maggie another thing is is like um i was in the video that i just posted that goes with um step one setting up so step one in the packet classroom is um setting up like texts and they're in the video um, I talk about here, look, you know, this video is like no secret. Like none of this is a secret. So I mean, it's not like, I don't want to keep information from you guys. It's just, I'd, I'd much rather you do it in a sequence and that I can like follow up with you. So that's why I'm asking for your email. That way I can follow up with you with other stuff too, like to see how you're doing in the future. But that's the video of um, me talking about how to like use Canva. So somebody was asking what's Canva earlier, and this you'll see me using Canva because I was I was using um, <laughs> Zoom, and I could actually share my screen. So and it also talks about like how to make your own text, like how to just go and find like you know deportes para niños or like you know uh, football para jóvenes. Like I put like para jóvenes or para niños in there because I want to get things that are for children. So this one was in French, so I put like um, like. Oh yeah, recyclage. I did I did recycling again. I'm a little obsessed with recycling because of this, which um, I also posted in, in the Google Classroom. But this is um, a video that I made the other day, which I actually made for Caitlin's students, but I haven't made it um, like, uh, and you could like totally tell the story of me. Like <laughs> if you want to, I don't care. You could tell them I'm your sister. You know, I don't care. So that video is um, something I made in Canva. Um, I don't remember how I was telling you the story of that, but it's a good video. Oh, well, what I was going to say, though, is that I made it for Caitlin, but I posted it on my website, my YouTube channel. I posted it there with no sound because, like, if you're going to be doing live classes, you're probably going to want to use it like a movie talk and not have yourself talking. And then you would have to talk over it. Unless you just like really want to take a break, you know, like why not, right? You could just record it once and then sit there and like eat palomitas with your students and like watch yourself for 15 minutes or whatever you have um, for the guided input time. And you could just like sit back and chillax and watch yourself and listen to yourself um, doing it once. On a video so, um, some of us are never gonna want to go back to school <laughs> all right so simplify and then okay reduce okay so this goes really well with what we were looking at with Caitlin and her packet 
Redu reuse, review, repurpose. Okay, it's like reduce, reuse, recycle, but reuse, review, repurpose. Like, Caitlin went back into her one word, or not one word images, but like some of them I think were one word images, but she went back into her um, shared writing and she pulled out some things that we had done earlier in the year. And so this is sort of like my, my COVID-19, like quarantine shutdown, like survival guide. But this is important. Like this is super important. I was I was telling um, Wendy earlier that like even our advanced kids like probably need a break right now. I mean, talk about a brain break. They need like a break from everything. I mean, I need a break from everything. This is insane. So going back and finding like like maybe you did a a novel, okay? So maybe you read a novel as a class, or you um, have read parts of a novel out loud, or maybe there's like a poem or something. What? song that you always listen to in class you can take the text of that and make it into um something in your packet or you could retell them the story like of the song for your um, input time or you could get the video of the song and like send it to them on the google classroom or something let them listen to the song and then do kind of like a movie talk over the song if you're using zoom the way to do movie talk is really to um, probably, okay, there's probably like two ways that would be good. Um, one way would be that good old fashioned way of like taking screen shares or screenshots. So like four to five screenshots from like important parts of the video and then like putting them into a slideshow and then like showing the slideshow and either recording yourself in Zoom. Zoom, you guys, I really, you don't need Screencastify. You don't need any of that. Please stick with Zoom. Um, you don't need to have a million different tabs open and you don't need to have a million different applications. And maybe there's like one or two things that Screencastify or whatever like does that Zoom doesn't do, but I've never once been using Zoom and been like, oh my gosh, if only I was using Screencastify. So I just wouldn't go and like start exploring the wide world of everything. I mean, even if you feel like you want to, <laughs> sometimes we shouldn't do everything we want to do, especially in a time like this. Like. Hey, I want to go to the Bollywood theater and get some fennel seed candy. But I didn't go get any fennel seed candy at the Bollywood theater, even though it's like three blocks away from my house. When, even before we, you know, really like got the message that we should stay home because I knew it wasn't going to be good for me. Okay. So like sometimes we just make the choice to not do something that we just think is going to be fun and that we want to do because we know that like, things are bad or like we are in a bad situation or we need to conserve our energy or we don't want to get sick or whatever. So I actually ordered some fennel seed candy from Amazon and it got delivered like two days ago. So I'm good on the fennel seed candy. It's not as good as the stuff at the Bollywood theater, but whatever. But my point is, is like you might be right now, you might be like champing at the bit. Like I want to learn everything. Like because you're kind of in panic mode, but I say you need to save your energy. It's not like we're going back to school in two weeks. So if you're in it for the long haul and you think it's like a marathon, not a sprint and Karen Rowan, if you're watching, I know it's ironic that you told me that the other day and Karen was telling me that because she was telling me that I need to sleep more. I am mean, about to sleep more, but like I can't <laughs> sleep more. <laughs> until I help you guys also sleep more and then we can all sleep together but it is a marathon not a sprint okay so what I want us to do right now is like carb load on the stuff that actually is going to get us to the end we do not need to be carb loading on like margaritas margaritas are fun but we really should probably be eating spaghetti and bread if we're going to truly carb load okay so like Learning every single thing about everything out there is fun, but if it means that you're going to be up at two o'clock in the morning, like racking your brain about what you're going to do the next day, that's not healthy for you. That's like trying to carb load on margaritas. I mean, alcohol does turn to sugar in your body, but it's probably not the best thing to be drinking before your marathon the next day. So I think you need to like carb load on some things that are simple and that they, they like came from, you know, back in the previous part of your year and also like you don't need to like be like the online class hero that like knows everything and like has been some of us are like 
really into technology, right? And we just love learning about it. And, and you look at some of these people and you're like, wow, how do they know all this stuff about technology? Well, they've probably like amassed, you know, a huge amount of knowledge by, by just like poking around with it like year after year over the past, you know, 10 years. Um, I used to teach a class on iPads. So I know if I, I mean, it used, I used to be kind of like pretty like more knowledgeable than the average bear about iPads, but that, that was in like 2012 and stuff. So, you know, iPads are kind of like a little more common nowadays, but you don't need to be like the online class hero right now. Nobody's expecting you to do that. Um, and you don't really need to have like a lot of theatrics. Okay. And you got to put your oxygen mask on first. And probably the most important thing is for you to have a structure. So that's why I made these resources for you so that you would have a structure. Now the packet people like, yeah, packets, it's better if your packet has a structure, like a discernible structure, but really I'm more talking to the people who like have to like face up to their students every day or, you know, interact, like maybe the packet folks are like still interacting with them. Like you're having office hours on the phone or like maybe even on zoom or something like that. I, I don't know. I'm sure every school is like addressing this differently, but your students are not expecting you to be like Jim Waldridge, you know, when they log in on Monday. <laughs> like, I picture that, I picture that video where it's like the whole class is like having this party and like this burrow like walks through the classroom <laughs> and it's like Maestro del Siglo. You don't have to be like that. <laughs> you can you can literally just be like sitting on your sofa like talking to them. They're gonna be glad of the human interaction. Um, if you haven't like if you have already started teaching teaching online, if you've already started teaching online, you can just go ahead and like post that post that right over there. But like if you have already started teaching online, maybe you can speak about this because I have found this like my Facebook lives and like my like all the webinars for that webinar series they're going really long because even though I feel like poop on a stick and I'm like really frazzled and I haven't been sleeping um, much. I have some sleeping, but not as much as I need to, Karen. <laughs> so I know that like, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm kind of frazzled. I forgot what I was gonna say. That's how frazzled I am. All right, let's see. Packet assembly. Oh, look, I made this for you guys about the packet assembly. All right, packet assembly. So it's better if you have a teacher buddy to put your packets together. Oh, yeah, what I was going to say is, like, you, you pack it, folks. You don't have – it's not quite so immediate, right? But, but like, as far as, like, being a hero and, like, doing theatrics. But, like, you pack it, folks. You do not need to, like, make the world's most fantastic packet, okay? Um, for one – if you teach Spanish, you could use Martina's packet and it, like supplements it with your own packet. And for two, like you saw Caitlin's packet, it had a, I just gave myself a paper cut. Um, it had a structure, right? That was just kind of like, read this and do something, read this and do something. So if you can come up with a structure to your packet, then the, you know, the little pages of it are just going to plan themselves. So, okay, packet assembly. Ahem. So, packet assembly is going to be better with a teacher buddy on video chat and a nice beverage and maybe some chocolate. But if you don't have a teacher buddy, you might want to find a teacher buddy. Like, maybe you would find your teacher buddy in that Google Classroom where everybody else is working on a packet. Or maybe you're going to find your teacher buddy by posting on Facebook. Or, I don't know, maybe you're like one of those Twitter teachers. <laughs> you like to just keep your uh, collaboration to like less than 140 characters, you know, because like you got things to do. <laughs> but I really think that probably is best if you like get on a video with another teacher um, and like try to find somebody who is uh, kind of similar to you in language and, and, you know, level, like elementary or whatever. First, you need to breathe and stretch. Okay. And then look, I made you some positive affirmations. Now these positive affirmations don't necessarily have anything to do with just the packet people. We could all repeat these positive affirmations to ourselves. Look, my best has always been good enough and it's probably going to be okay now. And even if it's not, 
It's all you have. So you might as well just do your best and call it good. Um, my students need simplicity and order more than fans, AKA fanciness. Um, they really do, especially now, but also every day. Um, I'm freeing up emotional and mental energy so I can focus on what's important. So what is important? Let's just all take a moment and all put in two things that you would rather focus on right now with your students or with your family or with your normal life or whatever. Maybe it's for your students. I don't know. But I'm sure there's stuff that your students would, would find a lot more important than your, your fans, the fans level, you know, of your packet, okay, or your online lessons. So I'm just going to sit here and like look at my beautiful flowers and you're going to type in two things that are something that's more important to your students than a fancy packet, especially right now, or a fancy online lesson with all the bells and whistles. So let's just hear it. So we're just waiting on some people to type in a comment. What are some things that your students would probably rather you focus on rather than like the fans level of your fancy pants packet or your schmancy pants online lesson that you're going to like spend eight hours making? So let's see, seeing me, seeing our classmates and laughing, having connection and letting them grieve no sports and no senior year. I know, right? Um, consistency and ease, need to be kind and be patient, not exhausted, smile and laugh and share our bloopers. Um, just knowing they're okay and ask them to share what they look forward to, having food to eat and friends. Um, time to talk, I know Carla, it's like the kids who don't have any food at home, it's really terrible. Um, time to talk with family and friends, letting them know that everything will be okay and staying healthy and positive. Yes, that's true. Maybe you guys will stay in that positive frame of mind and keep talking about that. But like, okay, you are going to hopefully, you know, remember this mantra and like repeat it to yourself. Let's see. What else? I'll come out of this stronger, even if it's hard. Look, that's a good, it's a good thing to tell yourself. And then crisis has a way of helping me grow. Oh. <laughs> this one goes like this. I'll come out of this stronger, even if it's hard, because it is hard. I mean, not to like minimize it, right? Like, oh, you'll be stronger in the end. Because it's not easy, but it is going to make you stronger. Especially if you can like get a level of like simplicity that you've never had before, um, because that's that's really like strength for you. Okay, the packet template. Um, I'm going to make a packet template for you guys. And... Um, even if you're teaching like face to face or you know screen to screen with your students, you could um, make a packet for them to do like for an assessment or something like that, like to get some grades in the grade book. So this is what I'm gonna put in the packet templates. And look at how crappy my thing looks. I mean, look, really, I thought about redoing it because I was like, mm, I don't know, some of those things got kind of big, and I was, was kind of like, whatever. <laughs> whatever you know I'm just trying to impart some dang information to you I don't think anybody ever actually really liked me because my like little graphics like look cute if that's the only reason you guys are hanging around with me like Nike has cute graphics too you don't listen to them for teaching advice so it's probably not like your amazing like fancy graphics or like your amazing lesson that people actually are like you know enjoying your class for it's probably all those things over there that you guys are talking about like asking them to share and letting them know that everything's gonna be okay. And like, wanna talk about themselves with each other. And like knowing that your class is the place that they can do that. So still giving them those opportunities. Which is why like, I put in, well, I mean, they could chat in Zoom, but, and I highly recommend that you only just use Zoom, okay? Um, but I also put in that, um, what's it called? Miro or something like that. Um, this I just found it. 
And there's probably other ones that do the same thing, but this one looked really, really good. I really liked this one, this app. It's basically like a little, it looks kind of like a bulletin board or a whiteboard, I guess. Um, and so the, the students can actually use the tools and they can like collaborate with each other. So they can all like be doodling and drawing and communicating and stuff like that. Um, but of course you want to make sure that, you know, they're not just over there doing that and that they're paying attention to you. But um, I'm sure that if you just use that for like when it says check in at the beginning of the um, online lesson, uh, whatever you call it, like, see, I can't even think. Um, the Google form, <laughs> um, at the beginning of the Google form, it says like to do this check-in thing. Um, and I would think it would be really fun to have them. I wish I could show it to you guys, but I can't because I don't, can't use Zoom on Facebook. Um, but to have them like to, to put like the, what you can do with this that I really like this app um, is that you can put like a picture in the middle. So you can have like a quote or a picture or anything. So you basically post that in the middle and then everybody can like write and draw around it and, and, and put up um, post-it notes, these little fake post-it notes and stuff like that. So anyway, I'm just going to walk you through this. So the packet templates. Um, so your packets, oh wait, hang on. This is actually like, this is the backup to that. So this is what makes, I think, a good packet. This is what I'm gonna put in the, what makes a good packet in just a sec um, when we get to in here. So what makes a good packet? Students understand the topic of the packet and what the purpose and what, you know, what the criteria of success is. And then I would say that um, part of a good packet is that students are reading and writing. Well, duh, what else are they gonna do? It's a darn packet. Um, and some of the writing, okay, I think this is important. Um, and in Caitlin's packet, you saw some good examples of some ways to get students to like create and play with the language. And then sometimes the reading offers choices. Well, Caitlin's does too, actually, because it's, it, they don't have to like do like number one and then number two and then number three. It says you can do whichever ones you want. Just pick one every day that you were supposed to have Spanish. Um, and the students can respond in multiple ways. Uh, Caitlin had that too. And then I would add, and I, I think if you look in Caitlin's packet, you'll notice that there is some of this, that um, <coughs> that some of the stuff that they're doing is like handiwork. So it's like drawing or um, just doing some kind of visual representation and not always like digital, digital, digital. Look, these kids are going to get like digitized out. Um, I know they love to go on their phones and blah, 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 but, you know, they usually don't go on their computers all day at school, too. So they're going to be, like, getting a little wiggy. And if we, like, require them, you know, with our assignment, especially if you have a packet um, that requires them to, like, use a pencil and, and some paper. And, um, boy, I looked a lot fresher when this day began. <laughs> I look so tired. Poor me! Poor everybody. I'm sure we've all been like staying up super late and all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, just getting them to do stuff with their hands is good. Uh, and then, look, you guys mentioned this a lot. Like, a safe, caring adult to confide in. They're probably going to need that. Think about some kids who are like at home with families that aren't really all that um, supportive or safe for them. So, they are probably really going to appreciate if you give them a chance to just connect with you. And I put into the, um, so not in the packet, but I would, if I was making a packet, I would put in there like my contact information or like a secure way, um, you know, that's approved by the school board or whatever, that your students can contact you if there's an emergency, if there's something that they need to let somebody know. Like I know that schools are setting up like counseling and stuff, but some kids like only have a relationship with one teacher. And it's weird because like you, you don't really know sometimes those kids who have this really deep relationship with you. Um, sometimes you probably don't know it at all because um, it's kind of this one-sided thing they don't talk to you about it but because you know they're like 14 years old and that's not all that cool like oh yeah Miss Hargan and I really like the way you make me feel every day like they're not that kind of you know mature reflective people who are like oh, good at communicating their feelings and appreciation for us but we could be the one you know we could be that one adult and they could be at home like not consciously missing us but if we reach out to them in an appropriate professional way, of course, then, you know, it might really um, make a big difference for a kid, especially a kid who's like sitting home with, you know, parents who might not be the best uh, role models or caretakers. 
Um, so let's see. Students have a way to request extra support or enrichment. Um, I would say that's pretty important. Like, especially if you're doing a packet. Because a packet's very, like, fixed. So, and I wouldn't say, like, for extra enrichment, go here. Um, I would give the kid the opportunity to, like, request it from me. Because that way, um, they get to reach out and they get some acknowledgement for the fact that, like, they're willing to go above and beyond. Um, students feel, oh, here we go. Here we go. Probably the most important thing of any of this. Students feel like there's some semblance of order, predictability, control, and safety. And that, you know, maybe finally that the adults wised up and realized that, like, you know, filling out mind-numbing uh, worksheets and stuff all day is, mm, I don't know, maybe in the big scheme of things, not all that important. Miro. Yeah, Pamela, they are. I did. I got, I don't know why, I got kind of, like, into that... <laughs> I don't even really like the cartoon, Kathy. Okay, I don't want people to think like, wow, Tina's favorite cartoon is Kathy. Yeah, I love Ziggy, Kathy, and Marmaduke. No. <laughs> I mean, you've seen the original, like, and future. The once and future. <laughs> See, I love the Facebook cover. It's um Bill Watterson. I mean, I love Calvin and Hobbes. Like, once you've tasted Calvin and Hobbes, you know, how are you going to keep them down on the farm once they've seen Las Vegas? Okay, I, I cannot go back to Kathy after I found Bill Watterson. <laughs> but I always, the, the only thing I ever really liked about her too was how she said, ack. Because, like, nobody says that. <laughs> but that's kind of how I feel right now. If anybody on the planet was going to ever actually in real life say ack, it would be us right now. <laughs> Um, how do you access Caitlin's packet? I, I put it in the, well, I can just give it to you here. I think I also, well, maybe it was in the other one because I got cut off. But, um, so I'm copying the link over here and I'll just give it to you here. But it's also in the um, Google Classroom for packets, as you might expect, seeing as how it is a packet. Um, the image and quote is great. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, Calvin and Hobbes. I mean, when I was a kid, I used to be like, when I grow up, I want to have a kid just like Calvin. He's so imaginative. And then I was like, no. Nah. When I became a mom, I'm like, thank goodness I did not have a child like Calvin. My kid was imaginative, but not, not anything like Calvin. All right, so it needs to have all those things, right? It needs to have purpose. Um, and I also think it needs to have, like, a place <coughs> for them to show their comprehension. Um, it needs to have, like, a place... For them to do like word work um it needs to have a place that they're doing something creative um it needs to have some kind of choice and then it also needs to have some kind of closure and communication so i gave you some examples here and i'll post this in the google classroom like for comprehension um see look it got all ugly it, see, it totally got all ugly and i was like i was like i'm proud of myself because i was like tina you know what just let it go you need to eat this dinner i was like sitting down at the dinner table i was like hang on honey just just hang on i gotta make this packet this packet packet, the packet about packets for the teachers uh, who are making packets. I'm like, how meta can you get? I, I just can't seem to like get in front of the screen here. So <laughs> there we go. Um, so I put a whole bunch of things here that they could do. And then I think I'm, you know, what are they going to be kind of doing this about? Right. So like, when they're like comparing, maybe they're gonna be like comparing two cultures or maybe they're gonna be comparing two texts. Anyway, this isn't like how to make a packet. It's like your brainstorming sheet of like swell ideas on packet making. And I'm not like a packet making expert, okay? I just have been teaching a while and I thought about what would be good to stick together in a packet. Um, and then, yeah, like, Closure and communication, like some things that you might want to tell your kids, like, do you need more work? Is it too hard? Do you have good news? Do you have bad news? Do you have a cool, fun story? And can I share? Okay. Like in class, we're constantly, I mean, I don't know about you, but like if, if a kid, like if we were doing like a check-in on the calendar and it turns out they have this amazing story, um, or like there was this one time when this kid, I'll never forget, Suresh. 
I called him Sir Dave because his last name was Sir Dev. When he came up to me on the first day of school, he said Suresh Sir Dev. And I was like, Sir Dave? Oh, I don't know why. But I called him Sir Dave and he always liked it. And so one day Sir Dave comes in like, like Sir Dave, you know, he comes in and like he had, he had these red Crocs and he wore red Crocs every single day. And one day he had on like shoe shoes. Um, and so we just talked about that like all period long. Like it was like one of the funnest days of the year for that class when Sir Dave was like wearing real shoes. It was because he was going on this like courthouse field trip and his mom like made him wear real shoes. But um, we thought it was so funny. So we have those days in our regular class and that's like kind of the spice of like teaching languages. It's why teaching languages is so much fun because like our curriculum can be that flexible because like our objectives are to like teach them how to communicate about their lives. So it's all kind of fair game. Which can be a blessing and a curse, right? Because, like, it can open up the possibility that we can do whatever we want and, like, we might be a little adrift. Um, but if we have this way in the packet or um, in some type of, you know, even in an online class, for them to kind of anonymously tell us all these things so that they have a connection with us and we ask if they can, if we can share it, then they will we might get some really swell stories that we can tell. Um, and then tell me, okay, so like if you give them choice work, I would make sure that at least one of, okay, this is just a, this is just like a chance for kids to be able to feel that pride of like I stretched myself. And I kind of think that a lot of kids like right now are gonna be so bored that they're actually gonna surprise themselves with how much they actually want to work. So I really feel like it would be, um, beneficial to these kids in the long run if like this crisis caused them to maybe just slightly more focus on like whatever schoolwork they can grasp at um at their boring house so um i would try to set up some kind of like wall of fame maybe like maybe tell them like in the next packet you know on the back i'm gonna like have a cute sketch maybe that you sketch or that you put from canva um, and a little like medal of honor that you either sketch or like put over from Canva um, or some other kind of doodly software that, you know, is going to honor people who like took, took the challenge and like took the four choices and didn't just like laze about their house. Like, you know, I mean, I was about to say dabbing and playing Fortnite, but see, that was the last year that I like taught full time. <laughs> Actually, it was a year after that, but. <laughs> they're just they're just twirling their fidget spinners flipping water bottles dabbing and playing Fortnite. that's just what they're doing but you know what they put down that water bottle um perfectly just right there um just landed that water bottle put down the Fortnite, and did the four choices on the packet and they really only had to do two so coming up with something to like acknowledge them for like academic excellence <laughs> even though sometimes I like to set the bar for academic excellence kind of low so that like people who usually don't cross the hurdle, like can cross it, but make it sound like it was their choice. So like maybe deep down inside, I want to give them four choices. If I can hold myself back as like the teacher that wants to give the four choices and I give them only two things they have to do out of the four or five or six choices that I have. And then I say, if you want to do four choices, you're going to have a really good feeling inside and you're going to be on the walk, the wall of fame next time the packet comes home. If the packet ever comes back home, if we come back to school, I'll put you on the actual, the, the, the COVID-19 wall of, wall of fame. Um, then, <laughs> like, if you tell everybody to do four choices, some people aren't going to do four choices anyway. They're just going to be like, I don't want to do four choices. I don't want to do zero choices. Some of those very same, like, more cantankerous souls out there are actually going to do four choices if you tell them, like, they don't have to do four choices. So it's kind of like little mind games. Because uh, you can't control people anyway. We cannot control people. People control themselves. So, like, sometimes you kind of, like, just, you know, in The Little Prince, where, like, the little prince says, like, or the fox says to the little prince, like, how to tame him, right? And he's like, He's like, well, I mean, you can't just like expect that we're going to be friends right now. You have to just come and sit in that chair over there. And then like every day you just pull the chair a little closer and then I'll be like, I want to be your friend, 
but I'm a fox, so I'm not supposed to be that, you know, I'm not supposed to be a boy's friend, so I'm just gonna, I, I have to sit over here, and we have to play this game, and, like, you have to keep moving your chair closer to me, and, like, every day, and then finally, like, I'll come up to you, and you can give me some food, and I won't eat it, but then you keep trying, and then finally I'll eat the food, and we'll be friends. So, I mean, that's kind of how it is, like, you're never gonna get, some kids are just never gonna get them to even do one choice out of a packet, but if you, like, give them a, give them a choice, um, to do, you know, to do fewer choices or more choices, some kids respond better to that. You know, you got to try different ways to like bait the hook, you know, because there's a bunch of different fish in the sea, even just in one classroom. So here's my last piece of advice for the old packet people. So um, this is the thing that I just put up in the packet Google Classroom. So you should really start with the text. And so I'm kind of like going to let you packet people simmer. Because, like, starting with the text can be, you know, the most, like, challenging part. But once you get these texts written or found or located, um, Caitlin was lucky because her kids had already written the stuff that she found in the packet. Yeah, Xander, I know. They've all moved past Fortnite. But I haven't moved past Fortnite. It's like my teaching acumen is, like, frozen in 2018. <laughs> uh, so... You know, unfortunately, my brain still thinks about Fortnite. It's like when I think about telling TPRS stories, I think about Hannah Montana and Justin Bieber. <laughs> and I think specifically about the Hannah Montana, Miley Cyrus, best of both worlds tour. Because <laughs> we had so much fun with that in my class. <laughs> so, when you're going to start with this text... This is the most important thing that you're going to do in the packet. The other stuff, you can Google it. 50 choices for reading response. There's a billion websites out there. But, like, really only you can make the text. Because either you're going to find a text that, like, they already made, right? That is familiar. I think familiar and comforting text is very key right now, okay? So, like, anything cutesy, anything, like... You know, I, I was thinking make a light. Oh, oh, today I made a light graphic novel um, in Canva. And I put it in the, um, yeah, I put it in the Google Classroom. I'm going to just um, share this with you guys. This is so cute. This, we took, like, if, we'd, if we had, like, read Brandon Brown, like, before, um, we could, like, redo Brandon Brown. So we, like, redid Brandon Brown with an elephant. I just, I wish I could show this to you. It's so funny. So it's, like, the scene in Brandon Brown wants a dog, which is, like, my favorite scene because it's, like, you know, scatological humor because the, you know, dog is pooping and peeing everywhere or whatever. And, like, Brandon's telling his mom that it's him and his mom's, like, calling the doctor. It's, it's like, slapstick comedy. It's so hilarious. And that's, like, one of my favorite parts. So... Um, I was like, well, what if you rewrote it as like a little, um, you know, so this is like familiar, cutesy, like it's like this light graphic novel that I made in Canva. Or I could take like, I could just ask a student, like a student that I know is good at drawing, or I could just float it out there to all my students, like by email or by like Remind app or whatever. Um, anybody want, anybody bored at home and you want to help me like draw some things? Um, and then they could draw them and like scan them in with their phone and just email it to you. And so you could have the students um, basically generating these little graphic novels for you. Um, or you could just make one in Canva because you don't have to be a really great jar. Like, it's so cute. I, I just wish you could see it. It's adorable. It's like, I took this elephant and made it like really big and then Brandon's really small. And then I took the bed and I like put it all like on top of the elephant. And so, like, the elephant's under the bed, just like the dog was under the bed. And then the elephant made pee-pee, just like the dog went pee. But, like, the elephant's pee is, like, so huge. Um, I got the pee by looking up the word splash on Canva. I did not look up the word pee. But most words in Canva, you can be like, hmm, I need a trophy. And you can put in a trophy in the elements tab, and you get a ton of trophies. Even the free version has tons of trophies. So if you're waiting on your, you know, teacher version to come through and you don't want to spend the $9.99 or whatever, then you can totally, you know, use their trophies. They have lots of, or whatever you need. They have tons of different um, resources, even for the free one. 
And so, um, let's see, there was something else I was going to show you. Oh, yeah. There is this um, text template one. Let's see if this has all of the different things. Yeah, so this one, um, it's it says copy of uh, recyclage. I'm just, like, obsessed with recycling right now. But um, I'm going to send this link to you guys. So if you set up a Canva account, I mean, really, Canva should be paying me right now. Huh for, you know, selling their free accounts so uh, enthusiastically. Um, the link to the Google Classroom, Janet, it should have come to you in an email. And if you haven't gotten it, then you should um, click on this thing at the top that says uh, CILiftoff.ck. The CK stands for Convert Kit. The best email server program in the world. Honestly, teachers could really use ConvertKit. I mean, seriously, if you want to go sign up for ConvertKit, they just, like I said in, earlier today, they had it, um, they used to charge like $29 or something, even for the like lowest price plan. But then like, maybe their company is just doing better, you know, like the better a company does, the more they can give away because they're not like scrapping after every penny. So they now have a free plan and the, if you do, if you do want to go play around with not now but when you get things under control maybe over the summer um if you want to go play around with convert kit you can set up little pages like i set up right here and then you can have kids like go and respond to different forms and based on the outcome or the form that they choose to respond to like you can set up a thing like a, a sheet google sheet or google classroom page or something with links and you can say like if you want to read scary stories, go fill out this survey. And if you want to read, you know, romantic stories, go fill out this survey. And basically you're like segmenting your kids. Well, of course you could just do that in class. You could be like, who likes scary stories? Who likes romantic stories? But the thing that's different about ConvertKit, otherwise than, you know, other than just like asking them to raise their hands is like, once you know who they are based on like what's, what sort of segment or like group they get put in by, the the convert kit page they sign up on like right now i know all of you guys you know want help planning things so now i've got you guys in this group because you are associated with this link and so then i mean i could ask like hey everybody who is having problems right and everybody's like oh i'm having problems i'm having some problems i need some help but then i don't have like this like computer that will never make a mistake Right? Like, if you say you want to be removed from the group, it's not like, hey, Tina, I'm getting kind of bored of being in your group. And then I'm like, oh, sure, I'll try to get to that. Like, I'll remove you from the group. I won't remember to you from the dang group. The computer can take care of that. Or you're like, oh, Tina, I made the mistake. I got the wrong group. It's like, well, you know, if I had these links going to three different groups, which I just didn't want to do, I wasn't sure. I'm, I'm glad I didn't because, like, some people don't know what their teaching context is going to be. So that's good that you have access to all of them through this one link. But you could use it too and what you can do after that is you can do like these email sequences so you could be like okay here's all the kids that want to read you know mystery books and here's all the kids that want to read like romance books and then i don't know in your spare time over the summer you could like plan little mystery sequences so that like every you know three or four days like you would send them a little mystery story that you wrote or something like that i mean once you get things under control that would be pretty sweet um, to learn how to do like for the rest of the duration here but you don't have time to do that right now I can't even believe I'm telling you you don't even have time to think about it um, so then you uh, up here what I shared with you here is um, basically this in like an editable f god this is so annoying in an editable template form so it says that like first year see look it's like it looks just like it, huh? It's interesting because this was sitting in on the kitchen table in, in there and I didn't uh, even look at this, but you know, well, I mean, I just, I guess I drew this in the first place, so I already knew it. I didn't have to like remind myself. So this is what the template that I sent right there. If you like have a Canva account and you open up the, the template link that I sent you, you'll have an editable version of this. Now the, the first year one, actually I went ahead and like, typed into it and it's all about recycling so you'll just notice it's like year one and two it has two paragraphs 
a heading and two subheadings. That's pretty much the way I write all of my things for first year and um, most of second year. Then in third year, it's like, okay, the font's going to get a little smaller. Everything's going to get a little squishier. Um, by fourth year, you know, so it's, a, wait, it's a smaller font. There's more information. And then by like fifth year, um, you know, there's like multiple pages. And I mean, this is just like in a packet, okay? This is sort of like what I would give them for like reading workshop. Of course, they read longer stuff. Like even in first year, my kids are reading like novels and stuff. Um, then this font size okay i know i know this sounds really nitpicky but this is very important to me like in first year i think it's very important that you keep the font size at about 18. like i'm not kidding you and i'm talking 18 for these parts oh god this is so annoying all right for like these parts right here not these parts this would be like 28 points or 32 points and then probably like it'd probably be like 32 i don't know what the packet is that i sent you but it's like probably 28 or 32 and then like 22 and then like 18 and then for when you get to like level five um it's definitely not going to get lower than 11 okay like if i see a packet in eight point font i've seen a bunch of kids walking around with like big thick packets you know all in like eight point font and no pictures and no white space and those poor children look like they are just suffering uh I mean, I would be suffering. I mean, come on, people. You're not writing stepping stones. <laughs> All right. Um, so then you got to have pictures. So maybe you want to do some drawings. But maybe you're like, okay, I'm not a very good drawer. But, you know, your kids, if you have kids, maybe one of your actual offspring is a good drawer. And they're bored. And you could bribe them with, I don't know, like, you know some toilet paper or something like that, you know, something valuable. And then once you, okay, so you're going to plan 10 packets, right? You're not going to do 10 packets right now, but you're going to have them planned out because what you're basically doing is getting the heavy lifting taken care of. You're going to have everything planned out and then you get to sit back and do the fun, creative stuff. And that is all I want you to ever have to do. That is what teachers college did for me. Teachers college it took away all the like stress and all the unknown and all the like that I had to go teach myself how to teach again every single day and all I got to do was like focus on the fun stuff so I'm gonna sit here again and I'll put these things up okay there's there's all kinds of other ideas so like this is you getting ahead on the packets okay so like you've got the rest of the packet ready to go and then you're like kind of putting the beautiful stuff for your packet like through your children or through a student um, or like you're finding you know, pictures on the internet and like just you know that's where the fence is going to come in but anyway I'm about to like get off of here I'm going to put these things up on Facebook and the, or on the Google Classroom you can go ahead and sign up you'll automatically get the email convert kit will just send it to you um, and then I'm logging off because my husband was like aren't you going to have a, a break and I was like well it's kind of hard to take a break when you're when you set yourself this like really big ambitious goal but I am gonna take a break and then I'm gonna get up in the morning again at like 3 30 like I normally do and I'll finish up all the things so that when you wake up in the morning you'll have um, the rest of the sequences but anyway before I go um, I'm just gonna sit here and um, admire my packet and look at my beautiful garden and read a magazine got the New Yorker magazine and I'm just gonna sit here for like a minute and then when I look back I would like to see if anybody who could talk about like what I was just talking about because I know I like preach about this all the time but at this point I have like other people who have experienced the benefits of having a daily structure for me the main benefit was that, like I said, it took all the heavy lifting off my brain on a day-to-day -day basis and I could just like relax and know that like Lucy Calkins and the Teachers College Reading and Writing Project had already like done all the heavy lifting for me. And all I got, all I had to do then was like, what poem do I want to read today? Oh, we're doing that mini lesson that I always liked so much about like, what do other people say about the character? So, you know, I get to tell the story about Cheryl and Cheryl in sixth grade and me and Susan. And the fight that never happened on the softball field or school. The only time I ever got close to getting in a physical altercation, ever. Um, I've never been hit nor threw a punch. So that's what I got to focus on. It's like, and 
the way I would like tell my stories that I like to recycle and reuse with all the classes, like these stories got kind of famous, you know, um, the way I would tell them wasn't always a hundred percent exactly how it happened. You know what I'm saying? And some of the things that like happened to me in my stories, I don't really remember how it happened because my brain was just so relaxed and all I had to do was focus on telling a really good story. I would just like add, you know, creative liberties so that I had this amazing life back in sixth grade with my very best friend, Susan, and those mean girls, Cheryl and Cheryl. There's like literally two Cheryls. Cheryl Hayes and Cheryl Buchanan. <laughs> anyway, if you could please, I'm just gonna sit here and look at the cartoons in the New Yorker, which is what I really like about it. Um, and if you have used this framework or a framework in general, did you find the same thing? And like, what was the benefits to you? Like, did it make you get more creative by taking some things off your head, off of your mind? So you write, I'm a read. So one thing that I'm noticing is that the New Yorker is now spelling um, L-A-T-I-N-X. And they're kind of like a bastion of um, conservatism in editing. So that's interesting to note. Okay, let's see what people said. I'm doing that too, too. Walk the dog. I'm not gonna walk my dog. Well, answered my question, but that's okay. <laughs> Allison, I I agree. Here I am reading, you know, all about crazy Bernie and Joe Biden here in the New Yorker. <laughs> um, and uh, nobody nobody's writing, but that's okay. No big deal. Um, I will see you guys. At least I use my time wisely, right? Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow if you want to come back and, and, and do another one of these because um, I'm doing two more. And then you're not going to see me for a little while. And I hope I don't see you for a little while because I hope you're just like putting the polishing touches on your um, online lesson plans or your packets. And then I hope that you can like just kick the hell back and like enjoy life because this is a gift. Of, of time and I hope you I hope that you're actually gonna be able to like relax and enjoy it bye